we talked about how the universe came to be with all its particles following their laws? Then life came with its laws. Then human beings with their gifts of mind, love, and hands lived on Earth. Some time ago, I told you the story of the Phoenicians who invented the symbols that eventually became our alphabet. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of our numerals, the way we write numbers. There were many people involved. While it is uncertain how long ago humans began to use speech, it is conceivable that when they did, they used words that expressed quantity, whether to count how many people in a cave, how far it was to the river, or to take a particular measurement, there was the same need then to communicate using numbers as there is today. People who have studied languages have found that all have some idea of number, even if only the words one and two could be found in the vocabulary. In one tribe in Bolivia, no specific words for numbers existed except the word alone, used to represent one. In languages where only a few numbers were used, there was little or no need to express large quantities. As there were no written records when speech developed, it is impossible to know how the use of number began. One early need for numbers was in counting. The variety of things used to count with was endless, ranging from sticks, pebbles, shells, fruit, and knots on a string to the universal use of the upright finger. One tribe, the Malayas, used stones to show quantity when the amount exceeded that which could be shown on the fingers. Sumerians and Babylonians. People spoke for many years before words were put into writing. In the same way, it took many years before signs for numbers were developed. The first records for written numbers were made about 5,000 years ago in the Asian valley of Mesopotamia, located between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. About 2,000 years later, the Sumerians, living in the same area, developed a system of writing numbers known as cuneiform. Its use spread and was adapted by the Babylonian merchants who used it to keep records of their trade. Using a stick with its point shaped into a triangle, the Babylonians made impressions in slabs of clay that were baked until they were hard. Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians living near the Nile River in Africa were also merchants and tradesmen who needed to keep records of their transactions. As they became more prosperous, the need for writing large numbers prompted the development of a system extending into the millions. Using what is referred to as picture writing, the Egyptians picked things in their environment to symbolize the base 10 categories of numbers. While in our system, numbers are read from left to right, the Egyptians alternated from left to right on one line, then from right to left on the next in the same way they would plow their fields. Chinese. The oldest known numerals were first used by the Chinese and were later adapted by the Japanese. The system contains symbols for the numbers one to nine and for the tens and hundreds and thousands categories. Rather than writing their symbols horizontally, the Chinese wrote vertically, reading from top to bottom. The first symbol in a number was used to designate the quantity of the second symbol with the third designating the amount of the fourth, and so on. Greeks. The early Greeks developed a system using the first letters of the number's names for their symbols. The five equivalent was their penta letter, the 10 used the deca letter, the 100 hecto, and the 1000 kilo. Romans. 
The Romans used a system similar, still in use today in the copyrights of books. Some symbols stood for the first letter of the number words, such as the C, which came from the word centum, meaning 100, and the M from the word mele, standing for 1,000. Others may have developed from hand signals. For example, the V for five may have represented the single hand held with the thumb and forefinger apart, and the X for 10 may have symbolized two hands held together with thumbs crossing in an X. The D for 500 may have evolved from half of the shape used for 1000 before the M was used. The Roman method was used throughout Europe for bookkeeping until the 18th century, partially because of the simplicity it afforded for addition and subtraction problems. Hindus. The origins to our present system can be traced 1,200 years ago to the Hindus. On their travels to India for trade, the Arabs encountered an arithmetic book written by the Hindus and translated the system for their own use. The book eventually turned up in Europe and was translated in Latin. As it was handwritten in manuscript form and more difficult to write than Roman, the system didn't get passed around quickly, and as it did, it varied considerably with different handwritings. Finally, in 1415, the printing press was invented, making it less easy to change the printed symbols. With more scientific work occurring, there came a need for calculating rather than just bookkeeping. A second look at the Hindu system with its zero was taken, and it was adapted for use particularly with problems where place value was important. Since the book that brought these numerals to Europe came from Arabia, they were called the Arabic numerals. One symbol which has been constant throughout time and is like ours today is the symbol used for the number one. Whether horizontal or vertical, all ancient peoples as well as the Greeks and Romans had a symbol similar to ours. The symbols for two and three have also resembled ours and may have resulted from a hurried attempt to make two or three slashes on their sides thus resulting in their connectedness.